Okay, how's it going guys? Today I'm just going through to go through all the components in the schematic. Okay? Just for my references and anybody that's really interested and um wants to know exactly which components go where and such. <coughs> just a quick video to show you exactly what goes where. I'll try to run through some of the values of these components and uh just to get you familiar with and uh, show you exactly where each one goes. Okay, so here we have your two transistors. Okay, these transistors you will want to connect to this nice little heat sink that Rick has provided. Just draw two holes or <coughs> and then um, attach them to there. Now uh, aluminium conducts heat very well, so if these transistors get slightly too hot this aluminium will dissipate that heat very well okay and you've got your two transistors right there okay so these transistors are basically that that little guy there and uh, that guy there okay so you've got two of them right there okay now you've got your diodes okay these are the, di uh, the three diodes that you get these are the one um, N5408 diodes, okay? Now these diodes on this schematic here are this diode here and also these large diodes here, this one here and this one here, okay? You can see one N5408, okay? You also get two of these smaller diodes and these diodes are these ones here, one and four zero zero one, okay, so that's them. So you've got one here and one here. Okay, you also get transistors. Uh, these transistors seem to be very good quality transistors because they have a gold band on them. Okay, gold band usually means one percent. So one percent of the value. So if you're looking at here 240 ohms this transistor uh, this one here actually will be within 1% of that value same with this one here which is 470 ohm this will be within 1% of that uh, don't quote me on that I'm not 100% sure but gold is the best you get gold silver and there's a third color as well which I forget but gold in this kit, Rick has actually provided very good quality <coughs> resistors. So you have your resistors here and here. Okay, so you connect them to the base and the base of the transistors. You can swap them around. Uh, you can also swap them for a variable transistor or a pot potentiometer. These go by different names, they're drawn on schematics different ways. But um, this one's actually provided for this part here in the circuit. But you can get your own at these values or above and then tune them yourself if, if, you, if you prefer. <coughs> I recommend just using the ones that Rick has provided just to get yourself familiar with the, with the kit and then start experimenting with possibly putting potentiometers there if you really want to but for now this 1k or 1000 ohm potentiometer actually belongs in this part here so that's that's this guy right there <coughs> with the kit you also get this SCR which is this guy here so you can see this guy right here is the SCR and on the schematic he is right there so that's the SCR now you were supposed to couple this SCR with the one of these uh, 1N5408 diodes. Okay, so um, uh, it shows you there quite clearly how to do that. So you got A, G, and K, and then A, G, and K. There is specified as to which connection these are. <coughs> now. Also, you get your neons. These are 110 volt neons, I believe. Um, these connect to the emitter, 
and the collector. You have your bus wire here. I uh, forgot to mention the bus wire. This is the bus wire that I've gotten with the kit. I think this is just a uh, copper wire. Uh, I'll cut this down, strip it, and uh, that can become my bus wire, which are these, you know, you can see the yellow bus wire right there. You don't have to use this. You can use anything you want, or you can just connect these components up together if you want. I could actually make this quite neat, so I may just use connectors rather than bus wire. But, you know, the option is there if you like. Now, Rick has also provided the switch. Now, in his actual videos, he uses two switches rather than one switch. It seems that he has upgraded the kit to provide this just a uh, double throw you can see it's a double throw switch but it has four rails with three connections per rail <coughs> and this basically replaces the two switches so instead of having to flip both switches you can just flip on flip off flip on flip off it's not actually, not actually on off you switch between you know charge and run or primary so basically what you're doing is with the switch flipping from charging battery to primary battery back and forth back and forth so this this switch basically replaces the one the two switches that are in his videos and in his uh, drawings that he has that come with the CD that he's got on there I've noticed that um, it's not mentioned on the CD but you know, if if you know anything about electronics, you quickly figure out that that's what this switch is for. It just replaces those two switches. If you don't know that, hopefully you've learned that from this video. So perfect. Okay, just just pretend this is those two switches. That's what this replaces. Okay, you have the capacitor. Okay, this capacitor is right there. Now this capacitor is actually an AC capacitor, so it doesn't matter which way you connect it. It doesn't matter. In here it does show a positive and negative connection, but that doesn't really matter because this is an AC capacitor. Whichever way you connect it, it's not going to really matter. It's a, um, a 10J 250 volt capacitor. Okay, I think the 10 actually means for 10... Um, no, actually, I don't know what that 10 stands for. Never mind. <coughs> That's right there. So don't worry about it. Whatever you, you're gonna, you know, connect it one way or the other. Connect it anyway, and it's going to work. Okay. Most components you can connect in, in no matter what way. Um, transistors, which is right there. You can see transistor. Whoops! I just dropped it. You got your transistor, so you can see you got your base, your collector, and your emitter. Okay, the base is the trigger. You could say if you send a pulse down into the base, it will turn the the collector on, and it will go through to the emitter. <coughs> so you can see here, it's also got base, collector, and emitter. Okay, and you collect and you can connect your um, diodes. Uh, into the revel uh, le relevant spots and you also connect your neon between your collector and your emitter. Now that's about it. That's It's pretty simple. I mean visually this is perfect. Um, once you know and understand your components, once you know what everything is supposed to do, how it's supposed to con be connected up, then this becomes very easy. I will mention one thing is as this picture shows your diodes okay when you've got your diodes there's a little silver strip which you can see on this picture here it's got a little silver strip that's what the line actually rep represents on the schematics it, it just means that the potential will only go one way the potential will not go the other way it will only al allow about 0.4 volts of potential to go the other way. But basically it means it's blocking from potential going the other way. It will only go one way. So that's what the diode means. 
So when it shows you the diode right there, basically means that you want to get this diode and connect it up this way. So that the silver strip is basically that. So you connect that between the bus wire there, and then you connect that to the collector of your transistor. That's the only really tricky part. Some people get confused by this, other people get it straight away. It doesn't really matter. I got confused the first time I saw it. I have no idea what the hell that means. I understand it quite simply now. Same with capacitors. Uh, not capacitors, this isn't a capacitor, this is a transistor. Same with transistors. They have different legs. Don't assume that the legs on transistors are all the same. In this transistor, this is the a MJL21194 transistor. <coughs> the first one is B, C, and E. Many transistors have completely different orientations. So research your transistor before you start assuming and hooking it up. Most people will know that. If you need to work, you know, there's something to learn right there. <coughs> Okay, so with that, I'm going to leave you guys. Hopefully you've learned something. I've learned a lot researching these components and researching this uh, schematic. And um, in the next couple of days, hopefully I'll put it all together. I'll start modifying the fan and uh, putting all this together. And uh, we'll see how it runs. Alright, see you guys later.